Good morning, church. It is an absolute delight to see you all here in the house of the Lord. Welcome. Welcome to Bible Bhavan Christian Fellowship. Psalmist says in Psalm 122, says, I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. And I'm sure that we allow the Lord to fill our hearts with gladness as we find ourselves here worshiping our living Lord. Let's pray as we begin. Father, we are so thankful to you that you have brought us in your house this morning. Thank you, Lord, for giving us this awesome privilege to come into your house and worship you for who you are, the amazing, the awesome God that you are. Lord, you are all-knowing, all-powerful. Lord, there is no one like you. And so, Father, we thank you for we serve the mighty God. And Lord, yet you give us this very privilege to call you Abba, Father, our Heavenly Father, and know you as a personal Savior and Lord. And so, Master, this morning we want to praise you with all our inmost being. We want to listen to you, your voice, and we want to taste your goodness, O oh Lord. Would you come and inhabit the praises of your people this morning? Come, Lord, and have your way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Dear church, now let us worship our living Lord. Good morning, church. Shall we all rise to worship our living God? For those of us who are unable to stand or have discomfort standing, please feel free to remain seated as you worship.
great is your blessing how great is your love that there is no one like our God and we praise you we adore you and we thank you for all the blessings that you have showered upon us and we especially want to thank you for all the blessings that you have given us in the past week thank you father for all the weekly ministries that took place last week thank you for the midday meal ladies morning prayer men's prayer meeting, prime time, prime timers visit, visit during the week, grief share, care groups, and Mount Carmel Bible study. And Father, we also want to thank you for the ladies meeting on Saturday, for Sarah's mother who was discharged from the hospital last week. And we also want to thank you for Pastor Ankur and Sister Bhavna that they were blessed with a baby girl on 3rd of May. And now, are also discharged from the hospital, Lord. Father, we also want to thank you for those who celebrated their birthdays last week. We thank you for Daryl and Devan Shwadwa, for Sarah Wilcox, for Sister Catherine, for Ivan Das, for Brother Sam Rao, for Eliana Glory David, and Gang Chui Lung Pemai. Thank you for blessing them with one more year in their lives, Lord. And Father, we also want to thank you for Brother Jyoti and Sister Shanti as they celebrated their 25th wedding anniversary yesterday, Lord. Father, we also thank you for all the care groups in this city and for Brother LP and all the Jethro leaders, prayer coordinators and teachers of the care groups. We thank you for their unwavering commitment to serving your people week after week in various locations across the city. And Father, we once again thank you for all these blessings and pray this prayer 
In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. You may be seated. Except for the care group leaders, the prayer coordinators and teachers of the care group, and Brother LP, who leads this department. Our care group leaders, prayer coordinators, and the teachers of the care group, and Brother LP, who leads this department. Every week, we acknowledge one of our departments in the church, and today, we would like to acknowledge our care group leaders and uh, the teachers and prayer coordinators. So these are our leaders who make sure that not only on Sunday, but even on the weekdays, the church members meet for the time of fellowship in different locations in Delhi. Shall we give them a round of applause? Thank you. Thank you. You may be seated. Good morning, Church. <clears throat> At this time, we shall uh, witness and participate in the uh, 19th graduation service of our Exposit Preaching and Practical Theology course, which starts uh, every July. And uh, this year, we have uh, 23 students that have gone through the course. And as Isaiah uh, 52 7 says, How beautiful on the mountains are the feet of those who bring good news who proclaim peace, who bring good tidings, who proclaim salvation, who say to Zion, our God reigns. And what we have done here in this course is a very small thing, but we are certain that God will uh, make it into a big thing, both the students and the course. And so at this time, we will hear uh, testimonies from two of our students, uh, Sangeeta Bharati and Philip Sinha. What a grateful time. Thank you so much. Good morning, church. I want to thank God for this precious opportunity to share my testimony. My name is Sangeeta Bharti, and I am from Chhattisgarh, from Bastar district. I always had deep desire to study God's word, so I applied in many seminaries and was waiting for the Lord to open a door for me. I knew I could not be away for long due to various family circumstances. So I, so I was praying for the Lord to open a short-term course for me. One afternoon, I overheard my sister speaking to my father that she saw a message about this preaching course in a WhatsApp group. Uh, but I knew that my father would not allow me to travel so far. So I requested to my mother to speak to my father. Uh, initially, she refused, but I begged her to give me just one year for study. And she convinced my father. It was not easy for me to come here, but the Lord had mercy upon me and enabled to come. I am grateful to the Lord for this opportunity, uh, opportunity of learning and growth. I also want to thank my family that, who allowed me here to come. Through this expository preaching course, I have learned how to share the word of God and how to apply it in my life. This expository preaching course was much more than preaching. It was an all-round training and development for me. I have learned how to, how to mingle with friends, how to prepare the house of the Lord, and how to fellowship with people from different places and culture. Life away from family was challenging. Many, many of the times I was physically and emotionally and spiritually down, but God was so faithful in providing friends, teachers, and church members who encouraged me. By grace of God, I'm completing, I completed this course, and I'm going back home well, well equipped. Please remember me in your prayers. So what God has started in my life will continue. And Sorry. Started in my life will continue to grow and flourish. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you. 
Good morning, everyone. My name is Philip, and I'm from Assam of Silchar. I was born and raised in a believer's family, but never actually learned and tried to know who Christ is. And in the days of COVID, one of my friends and some of the, some of the friends have shown me some clips where verses like Deuteronomy 6.4 and Mark 10.18. So I would say those verses like, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And Mark 10.18, where Jesus says, no one is good except God alone. I, I question myself, if Jesus says, if God is good alone, then why, why am I worshipping him? Why am I praying to him? I quickly glanced and screamed to his book and verses. I questioned my own faith and what I did was I kept the Bible aside and started reading another book which claims to be God's own word. And and as I was going through, I read, I read this book and realized that this book denies the complete deity of Christ. And it, and it takes away the whole deity of Christ, and I believed on it and continuing believing in it, that this is indeed the word of God. And continuing on it, I, meanwhile, I did not stop attending the church services, and my parents were least aware of this. And this went on for at least eight months, and one day it dawned on me that, and I realized that this book was contradicting itself. Rather than showing me the truth, the way to the truth, it was leading me more to confusion, which was disturbing my soul. And so I gave my Bible a chance. I, I started reading the Bible again, and this time I did not cherry pick it or glance through it, but I read in depth. I understand. And with the help of the God, with the help of our Holy Spirit, he led, me, he led me to more clear understanding. And this time, it makes much more clearer to me. This makes much more sense. And I actually read this book, and now I understand that Christ is Lord. I believe Christ is the Lord of Lords and King of Kings. And I learned from my testimony, from my life, that cherry picking is dangerous for my faith. And it can lead me to the eternal fire, to the eternal punishment. My journey to come here was so unplanned, as so called, uh, and so I would say it was God's plan, because I was neither ready to be come on to come here. And on one Sunday, my pastor come to me and asked if I would be interested to join in, in this DBI course. I I directly say to him, oh, "No, I'm I'm not interested," but. Fortunately or unfortunately, my friend, whom I planned to uh, go with to another city to study, to study for, he failed. He detained in his paper. He could not clear his paper. So I, I took my time and decided to wait for him and to come here and study the word of the Lord. And, and as I wait for him, I came here, learned the word of God, and, and the Lord helped me through this. And the Lord helped me through this to understand it much more better and to grow in my faith. And the DBI has helped me a lot through the Sunday sermons and the classes that, that they provide us. And I'm blessed through this. And God willing, I intend to help my family and I intend to continue with my studies and help my pastor in the church. I would very much need your continual prayer for me and my family. Thank you. God bless you all. Praise God for the testimonies. Uh, if I can kindly request the students to stand up as we uh, commence the ceremony. And before I call out your names, I would like to call Pastor Andrew, Pastor Aborn, Amol, and Angelina to please come up to stage to uh, assist and give out the certificates and the gifts. Okay, students, so as I call out your names, please come up and collect your certificates and gifts. And can we have the PowerPoint up? So first is Barkha Biswa. Barkha is from Meghalaya. She will resume her involvement among the children's ministry in her local church.
Damni Tekhil. Damni is from Arunachal Pradesh. She will be helping in her church ministry and in future she desires to pursue Bachelor of Theology. Sangeeta Bharati. Sorry, Mensing. Mensing Lekhil. Mensing is from Arunachal Pradesh. She has a heart for junior church ministry. She will be working among the children in Long Sang Church. Sangeeta Bharati. Sangeeta is from Chhattisgarh. She has a strong burden to reach out to community with the gospel. Sera Lama. Sarah is from Meghalaya. She has been adding beauty in the house of God with her magical hands. She will go back and serve among the youths. Uh, Suhasini Dompaka. Suhasini is from Andhra Pradesh. She will be going back to her hometown and serve in her local church. Vimon Renkun. Vimon is from Arunachal Pradesh. God willing, she will work among the youths. Abhijit Pradhan. Abhijit is from Uttarakhand. He wants to pursue his musical career and serve in the church. Abhishek Barman. Abhishek is from Chhattisgarh. He has one of the most beautiful and neat handwritings. He has finished reading the Bible three times during his course here. <clears throat> Asad Sadad. Asad wants to go back and share the gospel with his brothers and sisters. Ashish Barman. Ashish from Chhattisgarh is Abhishek's brother and desires to pursue his higher studies in Kerala. Sifas Nongrum. Sifas is from Meghalaya. During his 10 months stay here, he has finished reading the Bible three times, cover to cover. He has been helping the worship team in the Hindi and Nepali congregation. G. Sukumar. Sukumar is from Andhra Pradesh. He desires to go for higher studies in London. The students and staff have enjoyed his mother's homemade pickle throughout his stay here. Isi Dimbe Jimmy. Adim is from Assam. He joined the course a little late, but was able to catch well with the students. God willing, he will go back and serve in his church. Jeremy Mark Sandhu. Mark is from Jammu and Kashmir. He scored the highest marks in most of the subjects. He also played a vital role in the worship team in Hindi and Nepali congregation. Kumar Sumer. Kumar is from Meghalaya. He is very faithful in his works and assignments. He has finished the entire Bible two times, New Testament three times, cover to cover and he will go back and continue serving in his local church. Manohar Raj Kumar. Manohar is from Andhra Pradesh. He plans to pursue for Masters of Divinity. During his stay here, he has finished reading the Bible two times, cover to cover. Philip Sinha. Philip is from Assam. Alongside ministry, he wants to help and support his family.
Rajiv Chaudhary. Rajiv is from Rajasthan. He is very quiet. At times, he seems lost to be in his own world, but that is how he grasps his class lectures. He is a man of integrity. Rameshwar Patel. Rameshwar is from Raipur. He will pursue his higher studies and also serve in his church. Sanju Keshap. Sanju is from Chhattisgarh. After his ashram course from Chandigarh, he joined this one year preaching course. He will be serving in his local church. Toda Shemba Mothot. Toda is from Meghalaya. He has a deep desire to continue to grow in his relationship with Jesus. He will be serving in a counseling center in Shillong. And finally, Wahong Pangta. Wahong is from Arunachal Pradesh. He is the Barnabas of the class. He will be assisting his pastors in the church. Thank you. Uh, before I call Pastor Obon, I would just ask the church to kindly extend your right hand of fellowship as Pastor Obon comes and prays for the students. Let us pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we take this moment to thank you for these students whom you gave us. We are glad to see this day when we can send them away with your blessings after having invested in their lives. Thank you also for the teachers and the leaders who took care of them. And as a congregation, we have been honored to have their services and their fellowship with us. We now pray for them as the Bible mandates that God's servant is to God the, depo the deposit, which is the sound words of the Lord Jesus Christ. We commend them to you we pray that they will go out and also entrust to faithful men and women to teach others also. Help them so that they are not only able to teach, but they choose to live an exemplary life of godliness to match their teachings. And let them be your workers who have no need to be ashamed, like a soldier who is not entangled in other affairs, an athlete who competes according to the rules and a hard-working farmer who deserves his share. They are the vessels cleansed and dedicated for honorable use. Enable them to conduct a life of purity as opposed to indulging in youthful passions, not given to controversies, preventing breeding of quarrels, they themselves not quarrelsome. May they grow in being kind, able to teach, endure evil patiently, and correct their opponents with gentleness. May they fulfill your purposes and bring glory to the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We pray in his name. Amen. Please see that, dear students. Thank you, Pastor Bourne, and thank you, Church, for standing by the students and uh, and with us throughout the duration of the course. We also want to acknowledge the presence of Toda's sister and our two friends and Pastor Chiring and the team from Shillong. And we want to thank you for coming and being part of the graduation ceremony. Uh, if you are still interested in doing this course, uh, anyone from the congregation here, uh, if, you, if you do want to do the course, the brochures and the application forms are at the front desk, so after the service, you can kindly inquire there uh, in the front desk. And now at this time, we will have the Vita and the children's talk.
Good morning, children. We are beginning a new series today where we will consider the Ten Commandments. Sounds exciting, right? Every week, we will have one of you read out one of the ten. Five girls and five boys. And we will try to get one child from one of our JC classes each time. If you want to participate, get your mom or dad to reach out to us. Once we have completed all ten commandments, we will look at how Jesus himself viewed them. Okay? Uncle Koshi, what do you have for us today? When Jacob and his family entered Egypt, there were just 70 of them. Jacob and Joseph knew God personally, and Jacob's sons had experienced God's grace through the hands of Joseph. But then, for 430 years, the Bible is silent on the story of the people who went into Egypt. When the story resumes, they number in the tens of thousands, if not millions. Their lives, their dress, their language makes them indistinguishable from the Egyptians. And the time to send Moses to call out a new nation from Egypt had come. Why had Jacob's family come to Egypt? Famine. And why had they stayed? Remember, Jacob had insisted he be buried in Canaan, the promised land. Remember Joseph, who said, I am about to die, but God will visit you and bring you up out of this land to the land that he swore to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. And again, God will surely visit you, and you shall carry up my bones from here. Why not return after the famine? I can only guess. Egypt was an attractive place. There was money, food, water, technology. Why go back to Canaan? That's when God comes to call them out, when they love the world so much. That's when he chooses them. They're nothing special. God is special. They aren't different, yet he calls them to be different, to take on a new identity. How do you call a people out to be different? You have to reset the clock for them. Give them a new preamble, a new constitution, new places of worship. You have to retrain them, wipe away every trapping of Egyptianness about them. So a new generation enters the Promised Land, a new people. Do you remember how many of the generations that came out of Egypt survived into the Promised Land? Just two, Caleb and Joshua, both mighty, faithful men of God. All of the previous generation had died. God allowed the desert to take them. The link with Egypt was broken. The Ten Commandments and the laws, all 613 of them, are about this. The time in the desert, all 40 years of it, is about this. The resetting of the clock, the appearance of a new chosen people. Today, we are called by Jesus to come up out of Egypt and follow him. The Bible says, do not be conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Are we ready to hear the Bible's voice? Let's pray. Thank you, God, for the Ten Commandments that set the moral standards, the basis for our morality. But more than anything, they tell us something about you and something about us, what you desire of us, what you desire for your people, and how you're calling us to be different. I pray, Lord, that those listening online, children here, will learn about you from us, and that they will be pointed to the perfect one, your son, and seek to know about him. Thank you for your word. In your precious name we pray. Amen. A very good morning, church. It's such a great joy for Gloria and I to bring our love and greetings to you and to tell you that we remember you very much in our prayers. We are at that point in our service where we bring our confessions to the Lord. So family, let us confess our sins to God. And when I pause in the prayer, that would be the indication to bring your own personal confessions before Jesus. Let us all pray. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Take away from us our sins. 
and mercifully kindle in us the fire of your Holy Spirit. Take away from us the heart of stone and give us a heart of flesh, a heart to love and adore you, a heart to delight in you, to follow and to enjoy you. For Christ's sake. Amen. Family, receive these words of comfort from God's word, taken from John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Let us bring the needs of the church family at this time before the Lord. Lord, without you, we can do nothing. With you, we can do all things. Help us by your grace that we do not fall. Help us by your strength to resist mightily the very first beginnings of evil before it takes hold of us. Help us to cast ourselves at once at your sacred feet and lie still there until the storm passes by. And if we lose sight of you, bring us back quickly to you and grant us to love you better. It's by grace that we stand. Lord, we very specially bring all the sick in our family, in our church family, in our friends, in our work colleague circles. We bring them before you in the name of Jesus. Church family, if there is anybody sick and you are remembering them at this time, utter their name before Jesus. Lord, you have heard these names, Lord. Please heal them. Lord, we very specially want to bring the elderly parents of our church members and those who take care of them. We pray for Mrs. Maria Machako, Mrs. Akin Liu, Mrs. Nalamal, Mr. Krishna Kumar Bhatt, Mrs. Eli Das, Mr. Suresh Chandra, Mrs. Yolanda Oheda, Mrs. Ramesh Huri Devi, Mr. Sukhbir Singh, Mrs. Indra Kapoor, Mrs. Gai Khan, Mrs. Agnes Charles, Mrs. Rani Harman, Mr. Daniel Shakur, Mr. T.K. Thomas, and Mrs. Elizabeth Thomas, Mr. J.M. Kapoor, Mrs. Hamai, Mr. Tilak Raj Arora, Dr. Ashish Mukherjee, and Dr. Shashi Bhakti. Lord Jesus, we pray that among those who still do not know you as their Lord and Savior, that you would open their eyes for them to recognize Jesus as their Lord and Savior. We pray for Danis and Sanjana preparing for their wedding in September. Help the family and the couple. Lord, we pray for Muskan expecting her second baby. And we pray, Lord Jesus, that you would be with Anil and Muskan and keep the baby and the mother safe and bring the baby safely into this world. Lord, we pray for those who, God willing, this week, are going to celebrate their birthdays. Mrs. Maria Machado, Mr. Joshua Gideon, Master Zeke Wilcox, Dr. Hantok Fong, Mr. Kangaka Kiho, Ms. D.S. Wapane, and Dr. Tuchao Thomas. Lord Jesus, bless them and the year that is being added of grace in their lives. Lord Jesus, we pray for uh, the wedding anniversary uh, this week uh, of Iran Bimo and Sophia Murray. And Lord Jesus, we pray that you would give them many years of togetherness. Bless the marriages in our church. Lord Jesus, we pray for Pastor Sunil 
leading the Patna Center and leading the church this morning there. All the needs of the Patna Anugraha Ashram would be met by you, Lord, and help us to find a place there, a permanent place. Lord, we pray for the prayer ministry, very especially the prayer summit that is led every month by uh, Brother Amol, Lord. Lord Jesus, we pray that you would strengthen this work once again and that you would bring in more and more people who are burdened to pray. Lord Jesus, we pray through the efforts of the Church Universal, a billion souls would be saved worldwide this year. Lord Jesus, we pray for uh, the leaders of our nation, the President, the Governors, Prime Minister, Central Cabinet, leaders of the state government, leaders of the opposition, the entire state machinery, and the entire nation gearing and going through the different phases of elections. Lord, we pray that there will be free and fair and non-violent elections in every place, Lord. And Lord Jesus, we once again pray that those appointed by God Almighty will come to power. Lord Jesus, we pray for members of our armed forces serving our nation on borders, on land, air, sea, and those guarding our vital installations. Oh Lord Jesus, we pray to bless these families, these nations, and our armed forces. Lord, you know what distracted hearts we have. Oh, give us self-recollection. You know what hard dead hearts we have. O oh, touch and awaken us as Pastor Abuon opens your word. You know how we yet resist your word and our human nature is reluctant to bow to your authority. Therefore, O oh Lord, show your power that your spirit to work among us, to make our hearts submissive and ourselves capable of living in true union with you, our salvation, yes, as we yield totally to you. Lord, we need your grace. Help us. We bring all these needs in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Family, would you kindly be upstanding for the confession of the Athanasian Creed. Dear family, let us confess what we believe about the Christian faith. Whoever desires to be saved should above all hold to the universal Christian faith. Anyone who does not keep it whole and unbroken will doubtless perish eternally. Now this is the universal Christian faith that we worship one God in Trinity and the Trinity in unity, neither confounding their persons nor dividing the essence. For the person of the Father is a distinct person. The person of the Son is another and that of the Holy Spirit still another. But the divinity of the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit is one. The glory equal the majesty Coveternum. Such as the Father is, such is the Son, such is the Holy Spirit. The Father is uncreated, the Son is uncreated, the Holy Spirit is uncreated. The Father is immeasurable, the Son is immeasurable, the Holy Spirit is immeasurable. The Father is eternal, the Son is eternal, the Holy Spirit is eternal. And yet there are not three eternal beings. There is but one eternal being. So too there are not three uncreated or immeasurable beings. There is but one uncreated and immeasurable being. Similarly, the Father is almighty. The Son is almighty. The Holy Spirit is almighty. Yet there are not three almighty beings. There is but one almighty being. Thus the Father is God, the Son is God, the Holy Spirit is God. Yet there are not three gods, there is but one God. Thus the Father is Lord, the Son is Lord, the Holy Spirit 
is Lord. Yet there are not three Lords. There is but one Lord. Just as Christian truth compels us to confess each person individually as both God and Lord, so universal Christian faith forbids us to say that there are three gods or lords. Amen. Kindly be seated. I have the pleasure to announce the marriage bands of Joyce and Paul. Joyce and Paul, are you here? Can you stand up for a moment? Yes. Thank you. So Joyce and Paul, bachelor. Please sit down, Joyce and Paul. You can sit down. You can sit down here. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> OK, so Joyce and Paul, bachelor, a member of Bible Bhavan Christian Fellowship, son of Vasan Kamli and Mrs. Gitu Kamli, residing in house number 6152A, Part 1, Sector 3, Balabgarh, Faridabad, Haryana, and Miss Anu Spinster, member of the Bethel House of God Church, a daughter of Mr. Shiv Kumar and Mrs. Resham, a residence of Malerna Road, Hari Vihar, Balabgarh, Faridabad, Haryana. Their marriage has been fixed on 18th May 2024 at Community Center, Sector 3, Balabgar, Faridabad, Haryana. If anyone knows of just and true cause of any impediment due to which this marriage should not be solemnized, then it should be brought to the notice of the pastors of Bible Bhavan Christian Fellowship. This is the second call of this marriage, bands, dated 5th May 2024. At this time, we will let the junior church children, teachers and volunteers go to their Bible classes. Meanwhile, let's prepare ourselves to read and hear God's word. So if anyone is in need of a Bible, could you raise your hand and our ushers will hand over a Bible to you. Thank you, team. A gentle reminder to switch off your mobile phones or keep them in silent mode uh, to avoid any interruptions while reading or listening to God's word. You may take a moment to do so. And for any emergency purposes, you may need to step out of the premises. Kindly use the back door and not the two doors on the front. Shall we all rise to sing the pulpit hymn? Oh, Lord, as we come to 
remain standing to honor the reading of God's word. And I invite you to turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. If you are using our Pew Bible, you'll find it in page 965, page 19, 965. We're reading from 2 Corinthians chapter 4, the first seven verses. This is God's word. Therefore, having this ministry by the mercy of God, we do not lose heart, but we have renounced disgraceful, underhanded ways. We refuse to practice cunning or to tamper with God's word, but by the open statement of the truth, we would commend ourselves to everyone's conscience in the sight of God. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For what we proclaim is not ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord, with ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. For God who said, let light shine out of darkness, has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. This is God's word. Praise be to him. Please be seated. Let us ask the Lord to help us this time in the prayer. Speak, O Lord, as we come to you to receive the food of your holy word. Take your truth, plant it deep in us. Cause our faith to rise, cause our eyes to see your majestic love and authority. Words of power that can never fail, let your truth prevail over unbelief. As we sang, we pray the same. O Lord, let your word speak for you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you get a chance to meet Paul, you might want to ask him, Paul, in just one word, tell us what it's like to be in ministry. He would say, heart. Heart, would you unpack it? briefly. Well, we're beaten up frequently. We thought we would die. We were misunderstood. We were undermined. And these are just few things among many experiences. Then why do you continue if it is so difficult? He would say, because it is not hard for God. It's not hard for God. I believe you agree that this is what Paul has in mind. Listen to his words at the end of verse 1. We do not lose heart. As we read on, we discover towards the end of the chapter in verse 16, he repeats, so we do not lose heart. So these are the brackets within which Paul explains why he and his co-workers find the purpose and strength in God to continue despite hardships. So I want to suggest the title as the reason not the reason for not giving up. The reason for not giving up. When the going gets tough, know the one who is tougher, God. This is what I thought about it too. Maybe this is good for the subtitle. We will see this is true as the passage unfolds. It is helpful to briefly remind ourselves that this letter has the theme of afflictions and comfort running throughout the letter. As this idea undergirds the letter, it helps us so that we don't wander off to another theme. So from our reading a few moments ago, you know we are studying till verse 7 today, and the passage portrays itself with three key players in the whole operations. It comes out pretty plain, you can see it for yourself. So let us speak the first one, man's role. This is represented by the Apostle Paul and his team. Our passage begins with the words, therefore, having this ministry. So we cannot go forward without paying a brief attention to what this ministry is, as mentioned in the previous passage. Only then we can find out why and how his team should not lose heart. This ministry or service that comes from the word diconian, 
again from which we have the word deacon and deaconess, has to do with preaching of the gospel. In other words, Jesus is proclaimed as Lord and Savior. In doing so, the Spirit of God does the work of lifting the veil that blinds the spiritual eyes so that the hearers may see Jesus. Unlike the ministry of Moses, Paul finds himself serving in a much more glorious moment of what God continues to do. Namely, God is transiting from the old covenant to the new covenant. And because of which believers are saved and are being saved. That is why his confidence is already built up as he already said in verse 12, since verse 12 of chapter 3, since we have such a hope, we are very bold. This makes him go forward and trusting that his work will bear fruit that will last for eternity. As this is the case, he clearly defines what his role is. When I say he, he represents those who preach the gospel. In verse 2, but we have renounced disgraceful, underhanded ways. We refuse to practice cunning or to tamper with God's word, but by the open statement of the truth, we would commend ourselves to everyone's conscience in the sight of God. That's quite a mouthful, isn't it? And let us begin with, the, with disgraceful and underhanded ways. Disgraceful or shameful or uh, on one hand, and underhanded ways or craftiness on the other. There, there were those who go about uh, in the name of preaching the gospel, as we also uh, read, read the letters of other apostles like John and Jude, um, we discovered that they, they always highlight the uh, intrusion of false teachers into the church. They come with false claim that they belong to the same group where Peter, Paul, uh, uh, Peter, uh, John, and others are. For example, someone can come in this morning uh, as sent and recommended by Pastor Isaac. But nowadays, we have an easier way to quickly find out uh, the authenticity of such claim. John actually says that, that uh, the, 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 they were those who went out from among them, but they were actually not recommended by the apostles. But what they, they do, what do they do? They go out to a church somewhere saying we are sent by the apostles. Soon they begin to say that Jesus is not the Messiah. Jude was, very, was truly concerned because these false teachers were entertained in the churches, indulging in the hospitality, creating division and favoritism. In most cases, their false teaching concerning the deity of Jesus is the first and the main problem. Philip was talking about the same experience he had with the book that he read. There are many books available, many people claiming on, or saying that Jesus is not God. If Jesus is not the Lord, everything else in the Bible fall apart. They get into sexual immorality. Weak women in the church are tricked into sins. They love to eat and drink. They will look out for rich people and try to gain access to their wallets. This can be done easily in the name of spirituality. Later today, I can say to one of the sisters, Sister, the Lord is telling me to come and bless your house. I will come in the evening so you have to prepare dinner. I want to travel by Uber, but I'm a servant of God. I don't have money. You have to pay the taxi, and the sister will say, sure, sure, I'll arrange all these things. So, such are the practices then and even now. Paul says in Philippines of such men that their God is their belly. They go about in the name of preaching the gospel, but they were actually going to feed themselves. They are the antichrist, gluttons, lovers of money, and so on. They don't care about the truth, and they don't care about the people they are exploiting. As opposed to these, Paul says in verse 2, We refuse to practice cunning or to tamper with God's word, but by the open statement of the truth, 
we would commend ourselves. The anointed ministers of the gospel have one task to do. Make open statement of the truth. The root word for open is appearing, which is the opposite of veil. Just open it. To veil means to hide. One can veil or hide the truth by tampering or twisting the word. Yet the servant of the Lord, as he does his work, his goal is to draw the attention of his hearers to the Lord. Don't look at me. Look at Jesus and hear his word. Know him and trust him. One of the best examples in the Bible is John the Baptist. Some of the lines we are familiar with him is in what he says or what the Lord says about him. He says about Jesus, he must increase, I must decrease. I am not even worthy to tie his shoelace. And the, yet the Lord Jesus says, John is the greatest. And I've heard the most helpful outline on John the Baptist. One, he prepares the way. Two, he clears the way. And third, he gets out of the way. Prepares the way, clears the way, and gets out of the way. That stayed with me for years now, but that, but that kind of clarity does not come out in a few minutes of study or meditation. When John does, what John does is to make people look at Jesus while he keeps himself away from the limelight. Somebody said, preach the gospel, die and be forgotten. John will agree, yeah, you got it right, it's not about you and me. Now, unlike the stage light operator, it must be difficult to redirect people, ga people's gaze at Jesus because he is speaking, standing in the front of, uh, in front of them. And in big theater, you, you have the, uh, the operator hiding behind the bright lamp and, and up and behind somewhere. He is invisible because the light in front of him hides him. His job is to move the lamp and point it to the person who is supposed to be in the limelight. Proclaim the truth with clarity. One of the guidelines for public speaking goes like this. Step one, tell me what you want to tell me. Step two, tell me. Step three, tell me what you just told me. Right? Introduction, main part, and conclusion in harmony and supporting each other. Step one, I want to proclaim Jesus to you. Step two, Jesus is the Lord. Step three, Jesus is the Lord. Clarity is what listeners need. Make it simple, but not simplistic. It takes hard work to do that. Our students graduated today. They looked beautiful. That was a lovely ceremony. But they were here not to be trained to be sophisticated and complicated in their presentation, but to be clear in what they have to speak on. There's no need to debate, no need to contemplate, no deconstruction, no theorizing. No doubt there is room for scholarly treatment of the Bible because of its richness. Yet the deeper we go, the danger is that we can lose its clarity. Let the Bible speak for itself as you speak to others. Telling the blind person that he is blind is not going to be helpful. There is no benefit in condemning the morally weak people without talking about the mercy of Jesus. Winning an argument over those who, whose worldview is different from yours without pointing them to Jesus may make you look very intelligent, but you have not even started. Proclaim Jesus as Lord. It is not about improving your sermon or talk. True, there are many rooms to improve as you work. Paul does not demand Timothy to improve, but to be found faithful so that he may progress. He uses the word progress, not improve. There's a big difference between improvement and progress. With what we have and what we are, we can progress. Knowledge may be fixed. 
but there can be progress in acquiring it. There is progress in teaching the children in junior church as the team diligently worked to cover the 14-year syllabus. Same syllabus, but many years of labor. That makes it progress. There is progress in teaching the Bible as BBC of leadership faithfully attempts to cover as many books of the Bible before the Lord returns. We cannot afford to suspend any department in the churches because we need to improve it first. Simply be faithful, then progress will follow. Slow and steady, but it will. So Paul is not concerned about his presentability. Uh, he is not even concerned about his credentials. And uh, at one point he defends himself as he defends himself, he says, I'm speaking like a madman. You are putting words in my, into my mouth. I don't want to draw your attention to me, but it looks like I am doing, doing it because I have been misunderstood and falsely accused. He cares only about the faithful proclamation of the gospel. Make sure you draw the light on the face of Jesus and hide behind the lamp. After all, nobody should care about you because they are to, supposed to be drawn to Jesus. Does that mean you and I can be casual, lazy in our preparedness, and be shoddy in our presentation? Are you the servant of the king of the universe? Republic Day Parrot is a good picture, isn't it? It is the day the best of the nation are displayed on the path and in the sky, sound, sight, and skill in their best are displayed for hours together. Do you see anyone shabbily dressed among the thousands in the parrot? Paul and his co-laborers are aware that the king is present and watching. He dare not proclaim the good news, twisted or tempered to his liking and wicked designs. Let's move on. What will be missing if this passage is not included? This is a diagnostic question to help us study the Bible. Verse 3. Even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. Verse 4. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ who is the image of God. Paul reintroduces to us another player in the whole operation, Satan's designs. This is our second point. We were introduced to such scheming earlier. Turn with me to chapter 2, verse 11. Actually, we can read from verse 10 for the context. Anyone... Whom you forgive, I also forgive. Indeed, what I have forgiven, if I have forgiven anything, has been for your sake in the presence of Christ. Verse 11. So that we would not be outwitted by Satan, for we are not ignorant of his designs. We are not ignorant of his designs. Now take that word design and come back to chapter 4, verse 4. Look carefully with me. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds. So in the original text, the word for design and the word for minds here in chapter 4 are the same. The crude translation says mind effects. Another translation says apprehension. So Paul is talking about the mind of Satan who is influencing the minds of people. So what do we have here? First, Satan has access to the minds. He has the ability to influence what people are thinking. Secondly, you get a good view of what is going on in the unseen world. Down here on earth, we look at each other, we look at the church and all those who are participating in it, 
we observe a lot, many beautiful things along with much chaos. Now I'm sure we are very thankful for something like Google Map. You pin it out, you get a view of your delivery man just two blocks away arriving in two minutes. That's very helpful. Pins it back and the whole earth can be reduced to a size of an egg. So Paul is giving us a view, if you like, from the space, a cosmic view of what's going on here. Verse 7, sorry, uh, in the book of Job, Job we, we get the same viewpoint. So the Lord said to Satan, um, From where have you come? Satan answered the Lord and said, from going, and, uh, from going to and fro on the earth and from walking up and down on it. That's not a fanciful description. It's a reality out there. And he is not a passive being. Paul talks about the spiritual realm in which there is a constant warfare. Another picture we are shown is in the book of Daniel. What happened there? Daniel was fasting and praying for three weeks. And finally an angel showed up. He said, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that you set your heart to understand and humbled yourself before your God, your words have been heard, and I have come because of your words. The prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me twenty-one days, but Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, for I was left there with the kings of Persia. The prince of Persia withstood this angel delaying him. He could come to Daniel only after Michael came as a reinforcement. Angels were engaged with this being. Suddenly he is not a human in a palace in Persia. These are not warriors, not, uh, not noble warriors. They operate with schemes, designs. They are deceitful and crafty. And, all, and it all started in the Garden of Eden. The deceiver puts in the mind, minds of mankind, Did God really say you will die? Surely you will not die? Remember that conversation? Thousands of years later, he did not stop. He tempted the Lord Jesus himself while he was fasting, while the Lord was fasting 40 days, by tampering the word of, of God, quoting Psalm 91. Hey, he knows the Bible very well, but he misuses it by twisting it. And even now he operates through the cults. They're the, they are the devil's human agents. Without naming them, the established cults are operating all over the world. They have a Bible in their hands, and outwardly they look genuine. However, you go one layer deeper into their teaching, you will soon discover that they deny Jesus is the Lord. They don't believe in him. They insist that Jesus is not God. That's what Philip struggled for eight week, months. Thankfully, he's back with us. And they do that even by opening the Bible, but by tampering the word. They are not new. They were there in Paul's days. Believers were warned of their presence in their midst at that time. And then the warning goes out concerning their perpetual entries into the church. So don't be surprised if they are here today. So it is helpful to pause sometimes and ask, who do you say Jesus is? Who do you say Jesus is? You may have this position in your thinking that he is just one of the many religious leaders the Christian decided to pick him as their choice. And the rest of the world pick one each and form their unique groups and identify themselves by the revered man they follow. And then all people gather and say, as civilized people, let us create an environment of peaceful coexistence. Nothing bad in that. But you and I can be completely wrong concerning Jesus. The clearer Jesus is proclaimed, 
the bigger pr trouble he creates in what is called the pluralistic world. That's the reason that the early disciples suffered. They beat them, imprisoned them, killed them, and when they are released, they are told, do anything you want except preach that Jesus is God. However, the disciples who saw the Lord put to death, buried, who saw him rose again, appeared to them, they said to themselves, how can we keep silent about such a wonderful thing that took place before our own eyes? Beat us, kill us, but Jesus we must proclaim as we are command commanded. We choose to obey God if your command contradicts his. That's what they told the authority when they were hindered. That covers how, how we view and respond to the schemes of our enemy. Let's keep the Google map zoomed out completely and take a look at the power of God, our third and final point. God's power. The picture we now have is this. Although Satan puts a veil, it is a picture of a physical covering, but we discover that he is talking about the evil one affecting our minds. In other words, the spiritual eye is blinded, but God takes away the veil. This is the comfort and reassurance for those who have been sharing the good news faithfully, but not seeing the, the desired result. You may be one of those doubting yourselves and feeling, dis feeling discouraged, but let us see how Paul responds to such outcome. In verse 3, even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. And he went on to say that Satan is behind that. So if a person does not come to Jesus, does not come to faith in Jesus, even after hearing the gospel, the problem does not lie in the preaching. We have seen the role of man, make open statement of the truth, clear, bold, and confident, leave the outcome to God. Verse 5, for what we proclaim is not ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord, with ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. Verse 6, for God who said, let light shine out of darkness, has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. We proclaim God shines the light. In other words, he opens blind eyes. Rico Tice, the author of Christianity Explored, did something that God stuck in my mind. He was commenting on the same passage. What are we to do? Proclaim Christ. What God does, he opens blind eyes. We proclaim Christ, God opened blind eyes. We proclaim Christ, God opened blind eyes. He did the same way like that. That's why it it's got stuck in my mind. That was helpful. So, we proclaim Christ, God opened blind eyes. We proclaim Christ. That's true. See it for yourself right here in this passage. The Apostle John also says in his first chapter, the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Satan's designs can never outperform God's power. The devil's darkness can never overcome God's light. God gets to say the last word. Satan's work seemed to be a huge hindrance, but listen to what Martin Luther reminded. Never forget that the devil is God's devil. He is never called God's enemy. Peter says, your enemy, the devil. He is our enemy, but not God's. Zoom in. Man seems to be in a mess detailed by Paul. Zoom out. Satan is con consistently attempting to cast shadows of darkness to block the gospel light. Yet, blessed be our God, he is not affected by the designs of the enemy. Man proclaims Christ, God opens blind eyes. It has been like this consistently. We can imagine Satan looking up and down in great frustration. He tries to snuff out the light, but he cannot. 
It is like those funny uh, candles used on a birthday cake. Blow it out, pops up again. Blow it out, pops up again, very strangely. So, the gospel light always shines, and it will continue to do so till the whole world gets the opportunity to hear it. The process began soon after the Lord rose from the, from the grave. He descended to heaven. Then the Holy Spirit is, is poured out on the church. Since, the, since then, the gospel has gone out unstoppable. The outcome is foreshadowed in the book of Revelation. The saints gathered from all corners of the earth was not numbered, could not be numbered. That's because gospel is proclaimed and God is opening blind eyes and bringing lost souls into his kingdom. As this is the reality, we find Paul consoling himself, saying, we have such a hope. We do not lose that. There is no reason why preaching should be given up despite hardships of the highest degrees. As verse 7 is included for us today, we can look at it as the summary of what is just said. It is also an introduction to what is coming up next. Verse 7, briefly, but we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that the surpassing power belongs to God and not to us. So instead of a spotlight operator analogy, which is helpful for our days when we have the electricity, he talks about jars of clay. It makes no sense to make the container all out of expensive materials, right? In fact, nobody is bothered. What's inside the jar matters the most. So when we go for fellowship time after this, we get a coffee and a paper cup. What's written there? Anybody? Nescafe. Are you sure? Yeah. For some months, I, I, I didn't notice, but when I took a closer look, it's actually written Nescaf. C-A-F-F. -F. Exactly the point. I enjoy the content, and don't worry about what's Outside, as, discover, as you discover what I just said about the cup, use it as a sermon review, okay? Make sure you present the treasure in you, not you. That's what Paul is saying. As you read 2 Corinthians again, Paul gives all details of his sufferings for the Lord, whipped several times, shipwrecked not just once, beaten with rods, left to die outside the city. On his own, he sounds like what Bono of U2 sang, nothing to win and nothing left to lose. You can't be a bigger loser than this, right? It's like a debit card with a zero bank balance. If I had one during my college days, my debit card would be like that most, of the, most part of the month, broke and broke right from the second week. Right? There is nothing to gain out of it. There is nothing in it to make it lose something further. Nothing to lose, nothing left. Sorry, nothing to win, nothing left to lose. A jar of clay. You'll find them lying on the roadsides. But you put gold and silver and precious stones because they need it. They need a container. So Paul sees himself as a highly privileged one because God lives in him and exerts his power through him. So his body that suffers for the gospel has the treasure inside. This being the case, how does he respond? I do my part to faithfully proclaim Christ. If we go back to his first letter to the Corinthians, he said that he is not bothered about the outcome. I saw the seed. Someone else water it, and God gives the growth. I have no power over whether the seed will germinate and grow, but God is responsible for that. But I have the responsibility and the privilege to sow the seed. The challenge is, how is the seed sown? And why? For your gain with Satan's designs? No. 
verse 5. For what we proclaim is not ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord, with ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. If Paul is here with Jesus this morning, he would go to a darker corner, place Jesus right here where the light points to Jesus to show that the surpassing power belongs to God and not to us. That is why there is no reason to give up. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, once again we are thankful for your word. Long preserved and yet put together as one book. As you helped us to see the great examples of the apostles who did their part faithfully, so we are encouraged to do the same. We are made to be aware of what the evil one does to those who are perishing, but we know that you are the one who rescues those who are perishing, including us. We are reminded of your sovereign power over every soul and every matter, not only yesterday, today, but even for eternity to come. We are truly blessed to be considered the jars of clay holding the most precious treasure. Help us, Lord, to be found faithful even in difficult times. For the glory of our Lord Jesus, we pray in his name. Amen. Family, we are at that point of time in our service where we come to participate in the Lord's table. Request you to raise your hand if you have not received the elements so that the ushers can, can bring it to you. If you still haven't received the elements, request you to keep raising your hand so that it can be reached out to you. Let us prepare our hearts as we partake in the, in the Lord's table. Family, it's important that we come in confession and in self-examination because we do make mistakes. We do go astray. We do distance ourselves from the Lord knowingly or unknowingly. Let us not think that we are worthy. So family, Let's just pause for a few moments and then I will lead you in giving thanks for the elements. This pause is to examine ourselves and not to come in pride, but to come looking within and looking up to God and saying, I am not worthy, Lord, but you are worthy. Let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we want to give you thanks for your salvation plan for us sinners. 
We want to thank you, Lord, for your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who was faithful and obedient to you, Father, to the point of his death on the cross. Father, we thank you that you raised him up from the dead. The third day, you glorified him and you have set him at your right hand and in him you have promised forgiveness of our sins, our salvation and also the resurrection of this body. Lord, we take this bread in remembrance of the broken body of our Lord Jesus Christ. His body was broken for our sins. And even when we drink this juice, it reminds us of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ that was shed on the cross for the washing away of our sins. We are grateful and we are thankful for your love for us and for this great salvation plan for undeserving sinners like us. We give you thanks. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Family, let us remind us that this is for those who walk with the Lord. This is for those who have placed their trust in the Lord Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior and have given their lives to him, have confessed their sins and the need of a Savior. All those who know him as Lord are welcome to take part in this. If you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, as your personal Lord and Savior, we appreciate that you're here. But we would like to kindly tell you to observe and not take part. I would like to read a warning from the scriptures, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 27 to 29. Whoever therefore eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty concerning the body and blood of the Lord. Let a person examine himself then and so eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without discerning the body eats and drinks judgment on himself. The Lord Jesus Christ on the night when he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Family, let's eat the bread together. In the same way, he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let us drink from the cup together. Let's give thanks. We thank you, Lord, for a time like this. 
when we are reminded of the great sacrifice on the cross, when we are reminded of the Last Supper, when you instituted this ordinance for your people. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for dying for us. And thank you, Lord, for giving us eternal life. Lord, enable us to live a life that reflects Jesus Christ and brings you glory. We give you thanks. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Dear family, now as we uh, come to the section where we give to the Lord, we were encouraged by Pastor Robon uh, not to give up. And when the going gets tough, uh, we should know that God is tougher. And uh, also that we were also encouraged and exhorted uh, not to lose the clarity as we get deeper into God's word and also to know that the gospel light shines and the work of the Lord uh, is to open blind eyes. Our job is to share the gospel clearly so that the Lord will open blind eyes and also we were encouraged uh, to make sure we present the treasure in us and, and not us ourselves uh, because uh, the surpassing power belongs to God and not to us. So in response, we will now uh, give thanks to the Lord for our offerings and our tithes. Shall we pray? Dear Father, we want to thank you for this opportunity to give back to you from all the blessings that you have given to us. And we pray that as we give, that these offerings would be used to strengthen the local church and its missions, Lord. And uh, we want to give you thanks for this opportunity to give back to you. This we ask in your name. Amen. Shall we all rise for the closing hymn?
प्लीज प्लीज Just a few announcements before we come to the end. I want to thank you all for joining us for this morning worship service. All those who are here in Bible Bhavan, as well as those who have uh, joined us online. And while we always encourage you to join us here for this worship service on a Sunday morning, the church also believes that we need to worship the Lord with our entire life and not just for two hours on a Sunday morning. Very often, the attitude of worship ends in the parking lot as we leave the church. And that is why we have events right through the week, because we know that we are weak and we forget to worship. And if you look at the snapshot of the events, you'll find that we have weekly, monthly, and annual events. You can also refer to more details about these events on our website, that's www.biblebhavan.org, or call up the church admin on the number which is shown, that's 88606 34892. If you're here at Bible Bhavan, you can also go to the front desk, where today we have Saujin and Hazel. Thank you. Normally, when you have so many options, you don't refer to any of them. But I would urge you to uh, keep these in mind and make an effort to join these events and these ministries because it is always important to get together, to encourage and exhort each other and to pray for each other. A special welcome for the first time visitors. If you are here for the first time, I'd request you to raise your hands for the church ushers to come and give you a church brochure. We do have quite a few visitors today. The church brochure has a number of cards inside, which gives you details of the events. You'll find events for all ages, for all interests, and for all uh, kinds of ministries. And so I would urge you to go into and have a look at all these uh, cards which are there inside. And if you have gone through all of them and realized that none of them interests you, then you are a rather unique person. <laughs> Please do get in touch with us. We'd like to get to know what else we can do for you. Thank you, team. Uh, we do have at least seven or eight visitors today. After the service, the welcome team will meet you in the seminar room. And so do take a little time to meet the welcome team after the service. We do have events after the service, as we normally do. The membership class will meet today in the conference room after the service. The focus group, that's the Fellowship of Christian Adult Singles, will meet at 12.15 in the prayer room. And the leadership team will meet at 12.30 in the conference room. As always, the prayer ministry is available after the service, so if you are in need of prayer, just remain seated wherever you are, and the prayer team will come and pray with you. During the week, we have the langar seva, that's the meal distribution. And if you would like to volunteer for this, please do give your names at the front desk, and the details will be sent to you. This Friday is being the second, Saturday, the second Friday of the month. We'll have the prayer summit at Bible Bhavan. That's on Friday the 10th of May from 8 to 10 p.m. So please do keep this time in mind and try and join us at 8 p.m. on Friday evening. The Men's Fellowship will meet this Saturday. That's the 11th of May in Bible Bhavan at 10 a.m. The attendance for the men's fellowship has been the subject of a lot of discussion as we have seen in the past. It reminds me of a 
worshipper who went to the pastor after the service, a man went to the pastor and said, thank you very much for such a beautiful sermon. It was a very helpful sermon. So the pastor looked at this man and said, I hope it is not as helpful as the last sermon that you heard from me. So the man said, but why would you say that? He said, the last time you came and told me that my sermon was very helpful, you didn't come to the church for three months after that. <laughs> this is a new concept, even I'm hearing it for the first time. Uh, we hope the men's fellowship also doesn't have an expiry date like the sermons have. <laughs> the summer Bible camp was announced last week by Angelina. That's from the 20th, 20th to 23rd of June. Uh, the children are not here, but do register for your children for the summer Bible camp. The forms are available at the front desk. As also for volunteers, if we would like, a, a lot of volunteers are required for the summer Bible camp. We would like you to volunteer for this. And the forms are similarly available at the front desk for the volunteers as well. Please join us for a time of fellowship after the service. We have a simple fellowship meal. Not so simple, actually. We do have sweets by sister, Brother Jyoti and Sister Shanti uh, during the time of fellowship in celebration of their 25th wedding anniversary, which was yesterday. Congratulations. So do meet up with them and share in the joy as they praise God for all the blessings in their life. Have a blessed week ahead. We look forward to meeting you next Sunday. Dear family, let's all rise to receive the benediction. <clears throat> Let these words of mine, with which I pleaded before the Lord, be near to the Lord our God day and night. And may he maintain the cause of his servant and the cause of his people Israel, as each day requires, so that all the peoples of the earth may know that the Lord is God, there is no other. Therefore, devote yourselves completely to the Lord our God, walking in his statutes and keeping his commandments as at this day. Amen. Please be seated. The service has come to an end, but a few announcements before we disperse. First is we would like to honor the guests who have come to us uh, today. Uh, please do take time to meet us in the welcome desk uh, in the seminar room. And if uh, the visitor has come with a church member, if you can kindly assist them and take them to the seminar room. Secondly, uh, today is care group Sunday, so I would request the care group leaders to please come up, uh, come front here, pick up the boards that we have. And uh, dear family, uh, the care group leaders will not meet up with you to, do, to update and discuss the Jethro list, so please stay back and meet the leaders. And thirdly, I would request the students to please join Pastor Obon uh, in the entrance there. And, and, please, and church, please do meet them as you go out. <clears throat>